A master of distance, this sturdy airliner has sped us smoothly northward to America's oldest national park. And now below lies the Grand Prismatic Spring, one of the thermal wonders of Yellowstone, which contains more and greater geysers than all the rest of the world together. As the plane approaches Old Faithful Inn, whose rustic walls blend into the background of pine forests, Old Faithful Geyser suddenly erupts into violent action giving the air passengers a spectacular view of immense columns of steam and boiling water spouting skyward. The plane now passes over, now passes over the Canyon Hotel and soon a vivid splash of yellow appears amid the dark green of the forest. Below is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone from which the park gets its name. From our grandstand seat, we watch the magnificent lower falls of the Yellowstone, plunging into the sheer depths of the canyon, from which rise clouds of rose-tinted spray. Soon, West Yellowstone Airport appears among the trees of a virgin forest, and our plane glides gently to Earth, having carried over some of America's grandest scenery since leaving the runways at Salt Lake City. We find that West Yellowstone Airport is located just one mile from the western entrance to the park. This great area of unspoiled beauty is only a few hours travel by air from the population centers of busy America. Our flight has taken us northward over the rich irrigated valleys of Utah and Idaho into the famous Jackson Hole of Wyoming, past the Grand Tetons, and over Yellowstone Park itself. Ranchers, cowboys, and a sprinkling of dudes meet the plane to offer a real Western welcome to the visitors. Just off the taxiway stands one of the Yellowstone Park buses, two and a half day tour of the park under the instructive guidance of its skilled and pleasant driver. Starting from the west entrance, the Yellowstone tour will take the visitors over the Grand Loop Road through the heart of this 3,472 square mile national park. From Madison Junction, they'll travel northward to the Norris Geyser Basin and then on to Mammoth Hot Springs. The buses travel the smoothly paved system of park roads which total about 350 miles to all points of interest. The first stop is a hint of the many wonders to come as the little Whirligig Geyser introduces the Norris Geyser Basin, an astonishing region of steam and boiling water. Park rangers guide visitors along the paths that wander among the 30 geysers and scores of steam vents, such as this roaring escape valve on the porcelain terrace. and the growling, bubbling, turbulent sulfur springs. Nearby are such famous steam vents as the hurricane and the black growler, besides an abundance of boiling springs, cauldrons, and geysers. Further along the route, Roaring Mountain continues to astonish all comers with its hundreds of hissing and steaming vents. Still further north on the Grand Loop Road, the bus comes to the Golden Gate, and glides down to a wooded stretch where the passengers see their first wild animals, a herd of elk cows with calves. During the summertime, the bull elk retire to the highest peaks, while the cows and calves remain behind to enjoy the lush meadows. In the fall, the bull elk rejoin their families, 
remain with them all winter to protect them against wolves and coyotes. Visitors have no difficulty in approaching these summer herds, which are seen frequently along the roads. Jupiter Terrace is a famous feature of the Mammoth Hot Springs area. Mammoth is the park headquarters and a regular overnight stopping place for visitors. Such fantastic names as Stygian Cave, Devil's Kitchen, and Sepulcher Mountain aptly describe this weird region. These pronghorn antelope roamed the plains of Western America in countless thousands prior to 1870. Civilization and the intense curiosity of the animals themselves have combined to reduce the herds to a fraction of their former numbers. Endowed by nature with a running speed of nearly 35 miles per hour, with acute hearing and keen eyesight, the pronghorn instinctively frequents hilltops from where it can see in all directions. Following the Grand Loop Road eastward to Tower Junction, the bus will turn south to the Grand Canyon, where an overnight stop is made at the Canyon Hotel, a few hundred yards from the brink. Truly, no artist has ever created such sheer beauty as this. The world-famous view of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and Lower Falls from Artist Point. The tour continues and halts to observe a flashing tongue of hissing steam issuing from a cavernous crater, the Dragon's Mouth. Bubbling pots of mud remind visitors that Yellowstone contains no less than 10,000 thermal features, big and small. The next stop is at the bridge built for fishermen as well as motorists the celebrated fishing bridge, which spans the Yellowstone River just after it starts its journey out of the lake. Cutthroat trout abound here. They even attract attention of the passers-by. Look at that! Yellowstone Park is truly a fisherman's paradise, where fish are plentiful and no license is required. Leaving Fisherman's Bridge, the route follows the shore of Yellowstone Lake to West Thumb, where the road turns westward. After crossing the Continental Divide twice within a few miles, the bus continues on to the Upper Geyser Basin. Yellowstone Lake lies at an elevation of over 7,000 feet and covers 139 square miles. It's one of the world's greatest natural spawning waters for trout. The bears are a major attraction in the park. One of the joys of visitors is to watch these roly-poly clowns as they sit along the highways and beg for food. The black and the brown bears are color phases of the same family, the blondes and brunettes, so to speak. A fully grown bear will weigh 250 pounds, and although timid at most times, bears can be very dangerous when alarmed. Old Faithful Inn, famous since 1904, is still the center of activity in Yellowstone Park. Here, visitors make their headquarters while they explore the wonders of the Upper Geyser Basin, which contains 62 geysers. Grotto Geyser is one of the smaller wonders of this thermal basin, which also contains the beautiful Castle Geyser, a spectacular gusher that throws scalding water 65 to 100 feet high for periods lasting up to 30 minutes. The most celebrated and best known geyser in the world, Old Faithful. erupted more than half a million times since it was named in 1870. It performs regularly day and night, summer and winter, at intervals ranging from 65 to 70 minutes. After discharging 10 to 12,000 gallons of hot water in about four minutes, the geyser begins to subside and the crowd disperses. Life in the little village of West Yellowstone, Montana, situated at the western entrance of the park, is like a pageant of the early west. 
fishermen from all over the world are attracted by the fame of the trout streams and lakes of this region. Let's follow this typical fishing party as it starts out for an all-day trip. The innumerable rivers, streams, and lakes are full of fighting trout, big fellows weighing up to five pounds and more. Dry fly fishing, the royal sport of anglers, finds many of its followers wading the waters of this region. Their skill is usually rewarded with catches worthy of their efforts. Such as this prize-winning rainbow. After a few hours of fishing, the party rides down trail to a small lake for lunch. No sandwiches or canned food for these fishermen, no siree. Nothing more or less than fresh trout fried in bacon grease over a wood fire. There are more in the baskets, so these few won't be missed. Besides, the wrangler's just frying the small ones. He forgot to bring the large pan. When lunch is over, these fishermen will ride homeward, stopping from time to time at an inviting pool to try a special fly to catch a special fish. Henry's Lake lies over the state line in Idaho. Nowhere is there clear blue water set among the hills only 20 miles from West Yellowstone. These trout are big and fast. There are so many in this lake that no fisherman should complain about a lack of strikes. With trout leaping all around, it's hard for the angler to decide where he should cast. To return to camp with a full catch is what makes a contented fisherman, and needless to say, these men are happy indeed. The comfortable Pittsburgh Club on Henry's Lake caters to lovers of outdoor life. These ladies have hitched their horses nearby while awaiting the returning fishermen. Yes, they caught a few. In fact, quite a few. A string of beauties, aren't they? Fish like gold nuggets are where you find them. And this region of rivers and lakes is the fisherman's El Dorado. This catch includes rainbow, brook, and native trout. A future fisherman inspects the catch before the trout are cleaned and packed away in grass for transportation to West Yellowstone. Here, the trout are quick frozen, individually wrapped and packed in cases for shipment by air freight or air express to the fisherman's lucky family back home. Flying south again from Yellowstone, the aerial vacationers gaze in awe at the Grand Teton Range in Wyoming, one of the noblest mountain chains in the world. These granite spires spring sheer from the floor of the great valley known as Jackson Hole. Their rugged sides scored by avalanches and their summits crowned by eternal snow. The airport near the town of Jackson has a real western atmosphere. And here passengers leave behind them the cares and worries of city life as they step from the plane into the clear air of Wyoming. Jackson Hole attracts thousands of visitors yearly to its dude ranches and resorts. Grand Teton National Park contains approximately 150 square miles of lakes, rivers, canyons, glaciers, forests, and majestic mountains. Excellent roads and trails make it possible to visit major points of interest and to reach the various dude ranches, resorts, and lodges clustered outside the park. The drive to a famous working ranch, the Triangle X, takes the visitors through some glorious scenery. At the end of the ride, they're greeted by their hosts and fellow lovers of the great outdoors. The invigorating air creates a man-sized appetite, and even this little fellow feels that a stop for lunch would be in order. Ranch cooks are noted for the quality and quantity of the food they serve. So when the glad tidings ring out that Chuck is ready, there's a hilarious stampede for the dining room. Well, it looks like lunchtime is really here. On this working ranch, the dudes perform a share of the tasks, and one they all enjoy is riding out for a cattle roundup.
This beef stock had to be brought to the corrals, and this provided the dude riders with a chance to taste real Western ranch life. Young wranglers with future ambitions as rodeo stars commence their early training with calf roping and throwing as favorite exercises. Some calves refuse to cooperate, in fact insist on remaining upright and on all four feet. An art director and a New York banker try their skill as calf wranglers with results that are not exactly successful. The little frontier town of Jackson is the hub of Jackson Hole life. There's a modern hotel, but also a hitching rack for cowponies, for this is still horse country and the center of a large dude ranch community scattered throughout the valley. Ranches such as the Ram's Horn, the Double Diamond, the Teton Skyline Ranch, and the Bear Paw, where lucky cow ponies share the refreshing swimming pool with fair riders. It is now Sunday morning on the Bear Paw Dude Ranch, and the cowhands are corralling horses for the ride to church. Over a horse trail that winds through God's primitive out of doors, this happy cavalcade makes the Sunday pilgrimage to the Church of the Transfiguration at Moose, a few miles north of Jackson. The church bell calls people from near and far, tourists, dudes, and ranchers. They come by car, afoot, and on horseback, crowding into the little church and overflowing under a canopy alongside. The sermon may be forgotten with the passing of time, but not a person present will ever forget the grandeur of the setting. The cross of hope outlined against a visible manifestation of God's handiwork. The service over, our band of singing cowboys hit the trail for home, that home on the range. Outdoor steak fries are frequent events on the ranches, and at these affairs, cowboy music is likely to take the place of conversation. Riding back to nowhere, where the stars are bound. Riding back to nowhere, where the herds of cattle graze.
Not all visitors stop at dude ranches. There are many lodges and camps catering to all comers, such as Jenny Lake Ranch, near the beautiful lake of the same name. Signal Mountain Lodge lies in the shadow of the mighty Grand Teton, the mountain long known as the most noted historic summit of the West. Jackson Lake is the largest of the many alpine-like lakes that lie like a string of bees. Fishing boats, cruisers, and speedboats skim the ample surface of this lake, behind which stands a backdrop of craggy peaks and pinnacles. Water skis have a special appeal for some speed lovers, and the mastery of this sport is a real achievement. As the sun sinks silently over the mountain ramparts, the long shadows of evening race swiftly across Jackson Hole, and we've reached the end of a western trail. High overhead, an airliner silhouetted against the sunset sky speeds homeward with its load of vacationers, whose holidays were made longer and happier because of aerial transportation. Modern man's magic cock. Well, soon be in the 